Hello everyone, it's Ola here again. I had a few comments from a few people saying that um, Mr. Hallett died in 2014. Okay, this tweet comes from Mr. Hallett himself. He said, um, just a reminder to all who read blogs or articles about Greg, check the date. Gregory Hallett lives. We're enjoying some much needed downtime after a very intense filming of a documentary. I'll get Greg with Periscope as soon as he needs time to get he needs time to get out now. King's Courtier. Okay. I hope everyone is well and um not letting everything get to you. Raise those vibrations. Stop thinking negative and turn the T V off and Spend time with your family, pick up a book, learn some of the history. Okay. Okay, so some of you people in the UK who think Greg Hallett is supposed to be your new king, he is a fraud and now may claim to be a murdered. Probably a publicity stunt. Go read it yourself. Source, blogspot. So it does definitely look like him. I let the goatee tidy up the hair. Oh yeah, here's the, this was funny, this one is a clone that was on um, Facebook, they say, like, the the clone versus the real Charles. They, they do use doubles all the time, all the time. Okay, he had various attempts on his life, so I think after the 12th attempt, he, um... Went into hiding. Okay. I also found a bit more on the satanic pedophilia about um, Canada in 2015 with the Queen being taken to court. Okay. I've never heard of this mob, but a couple of people have brought it up, so let's put it out there. Reported exclusively by Guerrilla Democracy News, a close friend and associates of Greg Hallett have broken the news that Greg Hallett has been disappeared. A familiar term with AB4 murdered. That was posted by John Patterson, a member of the Evergrown Able Danger Group. Urgent I just received from an insider. God bless John. Hallett has either been murdered or has been paid off by the bastards. When did you last hear him interview? He took the formal case to the PM, which was suppressed, and Cameron just ploughed ahead with the charges in laws of succession, which permit only Prince Charles's bloodline to inherit the throne and continue with the lawless, barbaric behaviours as corrupted and treasonous heads of state. He was a Skype contact of mine and frequently sent me updates on his profile. Prophilic published profile. Prophilic published output and. Cuddling truthful views, yours great. Your biggest story in history. John Patterson updated his status the next day with my last post on my page will be up for as long as I can keep it there. Please read it all. Follow all the links in the thread. This is the biggest story in history. Our friend Greg, friend Greg Hall has been murdered by the scum. Confirmed with the telephone conversation, guerrilla drama. Drop Democracy News can exclusively reveal Greg Hallett claimed to be adopted by the ro- adopted by the royal true royal family of England and was ele- elevated to Lord Chancellor to speak on their behalf. He did say he's been controlling the royal since 1980 as the Prince Pretender from behind the scenes. I'm acting as a proxy, a stand-in for the true monarch and the true Prince of Wales. Posted it on the word of truth. dot net. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. So posted on the word of truth. dot net. Greg Hallett makes an extraordinary statement. The British royal family is actually fake. It's fraud. It's a flat light royal. It's a legitimate non royal family since at least 1901-1902, but it's really been a legitimate flat lie royal, non royal family since 1852. Contending that Queen Victoria had a firstborn son before King Edward the sixth, no seventh, and the son whose name is Marcus Manuel was born 
in wedlock legitimately, and that he is the true king of England. His descendants are the true king of England, the true monarchs of England. Greg effectively makes a superior claim to the English royal family than Elizabeth Windsor from Saxon Coburn got the royal dynasty. Lucky for some, unlucky for others. So, this is, I think, him back in 2014. I'm not sure. While friends and associates of Greg can confirm this death is 100% certainty, they fear the worst, having not heard from him for weeks. Having survived at least 12 attempts on his life, it would seem as the 13th had attempt had been fatal, and we know what they're like with their numbers. <clears throat> from an interview on the 26th of January, 26th of July, 2012, hosted by Jim Fitzner and Jim Vilkin, Greg Hallett, well, you know, it was the 12th one, and I thought, you know, the 13th is going to be a, trying to be a bit too lucky. Jim, Jim Fritzner, uh, yes, yes, Greg Hallett. The Royal Rugby Cup was having its open ceremony, so I escaped on that day because all the security was busy and focused inwards on at the games, not on the people leaving the country, so I literally escaped. I got driven to the airport by somebody who knows me, and they are doing and what they are doing and got me into the plane. It was a great relief to leave. There was an enormous amount of pressure on me. I was in tears last night. John Patterson, who first broke the news on Facebook, confesses to have been tears from having had the news. He said, I actually prayed for help. A member of Able Danger, a collective of like-minded people exposing fake false fake operations through evidence-based investigations, John admits that they may have never ever rec recovered Greg's body. We're getting through, though, he said exclusively to Guerrilla Democracy News. We don't know how it's happened, but he's disappeared on the attack. Sending out the signal to scare other people off from walking in Greg's footness, footsteps, dark footness, foots. Forces connected with the Queen will face backlash from an alternative viewpoint. Greg Hallett was not the only one who was calling Queen fake and, wanted, and a wanted criminal. Kevin Arnett, field secretary of the ITCCS, which found the Queen guilty of Queen's crime against humanity by an internationally registered common court. This was in um, 2013 or 2014 in Hague, in the International Court for the children that went missing after the dinner party. Um, John Wano, leader of the Maori Crown Admiralty Court Declaration with claims to the English throne with authority from King William, Admiralty Court Martial Order, Law Order, and King of England, who created this law in the first place. Reborn on the Maori Admiralty Crown. Matt Taylor, claiming the English throne as a descendant of King Arthur II, willing to drop his claim if his DNA evidence proves that he disproves his bloodline claim to the throne. Matt Taylor vs. the Queen of England. Tony Robinson filled a documentary which claimed the descendants of the George Plantagenet, Duke of Clarence, were the true heirs, thrones of England. Now these guys, what they're talking about is Michael Avenue Hastings, 14th Earl of London. Michael L. M. Avenue Hastings, 14th Earl of London, 22nd of July 1942, 30th of June 2012. There's these dates again. He was a British Australian farmer who is most noted for the documentary of British Royal Monarch, where he alleged that he was the rightful monarch of England instead of the Queen of England. From February 1916 until November 2002, he held the courtesy title of Lord Munchline. London was born in England and educated at Aberthmoth College in Yorkshire, but emigrated to Jewelry in New South Wales as a teen, where he was a rice farmer at Family Mead, and he was the Hair General of the George Plantagenet, the younger brother of Edward. Reigning from 14th to March 1461, 
1500, and then George and his heirs would have been the monarchs of England. Moon and uh, Michael died in 30th of June 2012 in New South Wales. So we have these dates again. He was born in Sussex, in England, to Captain Walter Strickland, Lord, and Barbara Ann Hastings, the 13th Counston, Countess of Lunan. Later lived at Ashby de la Lancaster. As a youth, he was educated at Fmore's College, New Yorkshire, during the moon to Australia when he was 18. It's weird. In 2004, British Royal Monarch, a documentary broadcast to Channel 4 in the United Kingdom, repeated the claims that Abney Hastings, a senior descendant of George Plantagenet, the first Duke of Clarence, is the rightful King of England. The argument involves two disputed claims. The first is Edward. I can't. I don't know my Roman numerals. I used to. Was legitimate based on accusations that his supposed father, Richard Duke of York, was absent at the time when it was thought to have been conceived. I think there was seven weeks difference. And his mother was having an affair with the archer and that he looked like the archer. And the second plantagenet crown should have been descended by a male preference, pre-prognitive, instead of the antagonist prognitive and conquest. Also, Henry VI had placed an alternator on Edward after he was restored to the crown and named George, Duke of Clarence, as heir to the throne after Henry VI had had his legitimate issues. Abney Hastings was committed an Australian Republican, and he did say that he would, if he, he, would, he didn't want to go to Britain, um, but he did say that he would, you know, break down the monarchy, that they waste too much money on stuff that isn't necessary. It's all pomp, is what he said. And he expressed no interest in pursuing his claim to the title. Although he was amused by it, he retained from using his title publicly. Abney Hastings has two sons and three daughters with his wife, Nolene Margaret Nee McCormack, married in 1969. His eldest son, Simon, held the courtesy title Lord Munchleton until his father's death on 20, 30th of June 2012. Until his death, the 14th Earl is one of the seven co-heirs of the Barony of Grey to a royal. These dates go back before current claim. I mentioned this the other day, but no one clicked onto it. So we've got the dates here. Hastings was a council in the Jewelry Shire Council, elected in 2004 and re-elected in 2008. He actually had a job as a forklift operator and enjoyed life, lived life, spent time with his children. Very down-to-earth man, like, he was just really, even his children, really nice. I'll leave the link in the description for that. Okay, so we've got these games going again. Okay. So, that video of the Britain's Royal Monarch is still up there, if you want, I'll open the link so I can add a description. I think it was done so the Queen can offset Carly. If by any chance Greg Hallett is, the hit, is in hiding for a good reason, then at least his disappearance will bring more attention to his revelations, said John Patterson. We hope he is alive and well. If so he returns, he would bring out even more startling revelations. However, I can't imagine anything worse than we already know. Echoing John's words, we wish his friends are wrong, and that Greg is in hiding for a good reason. So this is one of um, his books that he wrote. Greg Hallett wrote. Okay, so here are a few examples of his explosive revelations. The British Empire is a mafia, 
Being There by Peter Sellers is actually a direct parody of Marcos Manuel. Lord Lewis Mountbatten is a legitimate son of Peter Sellers. Peter Sellers had an affair with Princess Margaret. Neil Coward had a sec homosexual affair with the Duke of Kent. The Duke of Kent faked his own death. Princess Mar Mar Margaret had a sexual liaison with two West Indian men at the same time, and that was photographed and was kept in the Lloyds Bank vault, and the bank vault was raided on the 11th of September 1971, when a gang robbed the Lloyds Bank in London, and they actually produced the photos of Princess Margaret having sex with two Western Indian men, and then it was Lord Mountbatten who was asked to come forward, and he bought the bank robbers new identities, new passports, and they were allowed to keep the money, and they were allowed to escape out of England without harassment. Sounds like a bit of a setup to me. Sounds like a great job. Queen Victoria married Prince Consort Albert uh, Bigamously, and actually wore that the gays call Prince Albert, or that the gays call Prince Albert which is a chain around your waist and through the foreskin. Ooh. All of Queen Victoria's children were conceived by banker Lionel Knight Nathan Rothschild. So I've said before about these, that they're all Rothschilds apart from William. Um, William is of the um, Spain, this guy. So the British royal family can virtually engage in the ends and the intelligence agents across the globe. Sorry, I'm just going to close these. I get paid to um, view ads on this browser. It's so cool. Anyway. So they're all, all the Victorian children were conceived by banker Lionel Nathan Rothschild. The British royal family can virtually engage to their ends and intelligence the intelligence agency across the globe. Prince William's father is in Prince Charles, it's King Jean Carlos of Spain. Prince Harry is the son of James Hubert Hewitt, and we all knew that. You can tell. When Prince Charles was 16, and Camilla Parker Bowles' 18th birthday, they conceived a child. Apparently Charles had five children. Prince Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles' his child was adopted out by a royal servant. His name is Simon Charles Day, and he went and he's a telecommunications engineer living in Australia. See, they all seem to come to Australia to hide, and Prince Charles has been to Australia many, many times, so was he visiting his children? Just before William and Kate's William, Simon Charles Day put out a small email saying that he is a legitimate son of Prince Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles and is married to a Torres Strait Islander, which is sort of half Aborigine. It's half ab original, it's not Aborigine. The true word is original. They're the original ones of the land. Half Papua New Guinea. This is just, yeah. They had six kids and five are still alive. Princess Diana did fly out to Australia and hop on all the Torres Strait Island, on all these Torres Strait Island children. To see these children to the camera. Where royal murderers are called unlawful killing. Prince Charles had another legitimate child born in 1968 with a Balmoral maid. The Queen and the Windsor royal family are all. I'm not going to say it. Hitler was a rough child as well. This goes back to Mussolini writing The Three, war three Wars with the other general and there's another video in 1914 where they're saying if we sacrifice um you know six million of our own people no one will ever judge us or kick us out of our country again i think you know who i'm talking about i'm not gonna say the word is it any wonder the queen wanted greek silence so that they could run the British Empire as the Mafia, Greg's words echoed beyond the grave. Lionel Nathan Rothschild was known as the King of Kings. He financed virtually all of the monarchies in Europe, and even some in Asia. So he had breeding rights. And he had breeding rights with Queen Victoria and conceived all of Queen Victoria's children, which made them all vigorously born and legitimate. 
excuse me, and that's why the, I'm not going to say these words, sorry, are called amongst royalty, which are called, so it's carried on till today, the royal family today is all, and the term that is, and the term for that is a flat lie royal. And also, what about Queen Elizabeth? Is, um, is there a sister or a cousin that is in a mental institution? Who is she really? Like, the public haven't had any information about her, but she used to visit her quite often. Who is she? Who is she really? Okay, so returning to Greg's interview on the 26th of July, 2012. There are those dates again, back and forth. Jim Fitzer. I mean, they wouldn't be too pleased with having the throne contested, Greg Hallett. Well, it's interesting because we did another video on the 2nd of August 2010 and Queen Olga Marilia's 80th birthday, which is about three after, weeks after I had been interviewed with you in London. And we delivered the letter to David Cameron at 10 Downing Street requesting him to facilitate the change over the monarchies as we are the legitimate royal family and I have the hidden King of England book, just 20 copies done just as a tester, to see what the reactions were done, etc. Et and I actually went on to a couple of talks up in Scotland on it. So we'd pre-booked with them in 10 Downing Street. They knew we were coming, and we'd send them a letter. And we'd sent it by registered post. We gave them 20 working days, which is a, one month. And then we, and when we went there, we'd phone beforehand, have you received the letter? Yes, very likely. And then, have you received the letter? We don't know. And then they go there. And then you go there. Have you received the letter? No, there's no record of the letter. And Jim Fitzer said, even though it was registered? Greg Hallett said, yeah, it was registered post. So then I'd go in and I'd present the letter physically to 10 Downing Street and they wouldn't take the letter. Normally I'd just take the letter and if you go there and present it right, they wouldn't take your letter. So we had to go around to the army and to the navy stores and post it there, which is another 15 minute walk. Now that was the 2nd of August. So why, what, what did they do this? They got a copy, copy, they got a hold of a copy of the book. This is 10 Downing Street in Buckingham Palace. And they studied the contents of the book using scholars. And they realized that this was a legitimate and superior claim to the throne of England. Jim Fitzgerald, Greg, this is just astounding. To learn more about Greg Hallett's work of life, check out theworldoftruth.net. I don't think he died. I think he just went into hiding and he went into his training. Because you don't get in these places unless you're either a Freemason or a Rosicrucian or someone higher. Nero World Order. It's been around since, like, the Rose Christians joined the Freemasons on the 25th of June, 1717. The Knights of Malta are the Vatican. And the, the uh, child sex age in um, the Vatican and Philippines is 12, which is what they're trying to do in the, around the rest of the world, is bring the age down. Okay, so... This is just this bit I wanted to share with you guys. I hope you liked it. And um, I appreciate you watching all this and put two and two together. There are a lot of, there's a lot of codes given away here, people. I will break them down. I've been taking notes. And it's getting very contradictory in the words that are being said. It's like he's just reading a script and... When he's talking, he's, like, when he's sure of himself, when he's talking about his younger life, he's looking to the right and not up. But when he's unsure of himself, he's looking to the left and looking up. And if he's right-handed, that's a sure sign that it's telling a lie. So, hang on a sec. So, this is the video that was put out. I think it actually came out and... 2007 or 2008 very like it didn't come out in 2011 i think it was about 2007 or 2008 
I'll leave a link in the description. I'm not going to play it. I don't want to get copyrighted. Guys, okay, so thank you to all my new subscribers. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, trolls, <laughs> I'll just block you and laugh at you for wasting your time. Um, it doesn't bother me. I got thick skin, mate. Don't bother me. You can keep wasting your time. But to me, this still looks very similar to, you know, you look at the eyes and the nose and the face. I've saved the photo and I'm going to compare the two photos today. And he looks a bit older. But also, his job is an architect and a psychologist, so I dare say he had a lot of learning to do. And also, how can you read the Bible? He said he read the Bible in the summer of 2018. It takes more than one summer to read the Bible, even if you're a speed reader, to read it and to understand it. It is with the parables. You know, each word has about 900 different meanings. You know, the thoughts, the thoros and the parables, so... Yeah. Thanks for watching. Um, you all, you have a good day, good evening, good night, wherever you are in the world. Love you all. Thank you. Bye.